YouTubers, Fireboy Reef here. So on today's episode of Coral Friday, I picked up a really nice specimen rock. Um, it's a very beautiful rock, guys. It's uh, actually, I actually ended up picking up some zoos for you guys to check out today. Um, on this rock, there's actually three different colonies. Um, on the first one to start with, we have the Green Bay Packers Zoo. It's a beautiful, uh, I've always been looking for this one. And another one is the Radioactive Dragon's Eye. It's a very nice looking uh, polyp as well, guys. And last but not least, we've got the LA Lakers Zoo. I've been looking for these ones for a long time now, and my buddy Ashik uh, from Aqua Valley that I buy all my corals from, he has a lot of different rare species there you guys should go check out. So that's why I want to pick up this rock, guys, because I haven't seen one like this with that many uh, like rare zoos on it. And I thought, well, it'd be beautiful for the tank, guys. So I have it right now. It's uh, in the tank here. It's been acclimating for about an hour. Um, you always want to make sure you add a little bit of your tank water. Uh, make sure your salinity is the same that's in the bag that's in your tank. And uh, your temperature is the same as well because you don't. A few conditions that these Zorox like, um, they like uh, true actinic lighting. Uh, there's the best to view under, so you can actually see the algae that's in their skin uh, be fluorescent and really bright, so you can really enjoy uh, looking at your Zorox. Um, one other thing that uh, these uh, rocks like as well, they like a temperature from 72 to 78 degrees. Um, that's the perfect temperature to keep in your tank for these Zorox. Um, they, they like to have a pH of uh, 8.1 to uh, 8.4 in that range guys and a DKH of 812 that will really bring out your corals they'll really pop and uh, thrive in your tank guys um, water flow they like intermediate flow and they like moderate flow so they like it when you ramp up your flow and bring it down so you have that you know the, the wave action they like that guys um, one thing you have to be very cautious uh, with the uh, Zorox is the, the polytoxin that's in them um, you don't want to get in your eyes, you know, or in your mouth or on your skin. Um, it can be very dangerous. You can go blind. Um, it could kill you. So you got to be very careful. Uh, you should always research any corals you're going to be handling before you put them in your tank just so you can protect yourself and protect your family. If you have small children and you have your coral sitting around on the table or something and your son or daughter grabs it, puts it in their mouth, make sure you get them to the hospital right away because it's very toxin, guys. So that's one point where you just please be very careful because with myself, with my kids, when I have corals, I end up making sure either they're going outside or staying in the kitchen with their mother. All right, guys. So then we're going to end up showing you where I'm, and I'm going to place in it, the reasons why. And we want to make sure we have all the right lighting, all the right flow. So we end up having to pick a, a real excellent spot for this. I have my zoo garden up on the top here on the cliff that eventually when I frag, I'm going to add in some uh, zoos up there as well, guys. All right, guys. So let's take this zoo rock down to the lab, and uh, we're going to put it in some revive coral dip, guys. Always make sure you coral dip uh, all your corals. You don't want to get any pests in your tank that could end up taking over or cause a real disaster. So let's up going down there. We're going to use the revive, put it in there about 15 minutes, so we can make sure there's no, or, so we're pest free. Don't want to get in the 220 gallon uh, display tank, guys. All right, guys. So I just made it down into my lab. Um, so I got my water here all ready to go. I got it all measured out, and what we're going to use is the revive uh, coral dip, guys. Uh, by Julian Sprung, two little fishies, it's great stuff. You're end up gonna use four uh, capfuls of uh, this product in the water, 3.8 liters of water per four uh, capfuls of this stuff. I end up picking up at my local fish store for $9.99. Um, it's amazing stuff, you see from my other videos, it takes a lot of the little pests off and it's great product. You always wanna make sure and coral dip your corals before they go in your tank so we don't have any of those pests get in there, guys. And one other hint too, is make sure to always rinse uh, your corals off Make sure all the revive is off your corals. You don't want to get in the main display tank. So what I usually do is I'll take, uh, I'll end up rinsing them three times with some uh, tank water and keep rinsing them and then put them in the display tank, guys. So that works the best. So I got the zoo rocks here, the three different kinds of zoos. I got some rare ones here. I'm very excited uh, to get these in. And hopefully when I get them in the tank and as they're established, I can start to frag them out and start filling uh, up uh, my zoo garden. Um, there is, there's an, actually an SPS coral that's on here as well. Um, I still have to identify this one but it's pretty neat. It's like a purple smooth one that I'm gonna have to research and figure out which one it is, guys. But maybe uh, one of you guys can tell me what this uh, SPS coral that's growing on the side of this uh, zoo rock. So there actually is four corals on here, guys, but maybe I'll leave it to you guys and maybe you guys can figure it out and let me know. So I'm just gonna get them out here and gonna get them into the coral dip, guys, and then uh, we'll move them around, agitate the water, see if we have any little pests coming off on this, guys. All right, so I got the revive uh, coral dip, guys, so we gotta put four uh, catfuls in the water here. So there's one, two, three, four. So we got that in the water and then we're just gonna agitate that a bit. We'll just mix that up. Make sure it's uh, well mixed up in the water. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the bag that's in here. This is the zoo rock, guys. You guys see all the zoos there? 
And if you look on this side, this is the, the SPS coral that's growing on the side as well that we can't have to identify and hopefully you guys can identify that for me. So let's get we this zoos in there and the SPS coral in there. So I'm gonna bring you guys in close. I got it all mixed up. Let's see if we can see any pests. Okay, so there's the, there's the three different kinds of zoos right there. And the SPS, you guys can see it on the left right here. Under the lights it looked uh, purple, but you can see it's a very nice specimen. You already see there's a few uh, critters coming off here already. So let's just uh, move this around a little bit. I'm gonna get my get my coral screwdriver. And I'm just gonna move this off to the side a bit and see what's moving around here. There was a little bit of bubble algae, but I just popped that off. I just used a, a pin to make sure to get rid of it. I don't want that in my display tank and it didn't bust, so that's a bonus. But look at, we got a little serpent star fish right there, bristle star. I'll try to get him out of there right now. Maybe I can save him. I got him out, he's doing really well. We just move them around here. I got them all cleaned up. He's a nice specimen. So he's doing well. I rinsed them about three times. So I'll probably put him in Landon's tank. But I like to save these guys, you know what I mean? They're a good uh, scavenger. So let's go back to the, the zoo rock now. All right, so I end up popping off that, that bubble algae there. Don't like that stuff. So everything else is looking pretty good. So let's just agitate the water some more here. See if we get any other little guys off here. Look at that, so there's another bristle worm just came off and there's a smaller one in there as well. So I end up picking off any of the bubble algae that was around there and I make sure the rock is all cleaned up. I just uh, cleaned it up really well. You guys can see uh, there's a bristle worm right there. I don't care for them too much. And there's that bubble algae I knocked off there. So this revive stuff works great, guys. So the time's almost up. And then we can rinse it three times, get it in the display tank. Actual way if you have bubble algae in your tank, what I usually do, if I had any in my tank, I have uh, two emerald crabs. And if I see one little speck, in the next morning usually it's gone because uh, those emerald crabs that come out at night and they feed on bubble algae. And it's a natural way to get rid of it out of your tank. There's a few other tricks we can list later, but I find just using the natural way with the emerald crabs that they really enjoy eating that stuff. That's one little pointer. So the coral's been up for 15 minutes, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse him three times. Then let's go upstairs together and then we'll mount him and why we're mounting him in that area and the lighting and see if we can get this coral to pop. Hopefully it'll open up right away and you guys can see all three different. All right, guys, so I got the zoos all mounted up. I put, end up putting them on the left-hand side. On um, that area, there's moderate flow and intermediate flow. So we got a little bit of the, the, you know, the waves going on. And then there's just enough light. I got T5 lighting, the hybrid system I built with my LED. So it should be a perfect uh, situation for them. So I'm gonna bring you guys up close and personal, show you uh, these corals. We end up, we got the Green Bay Packers uh, Zoo. We end up having the Radioactive Dragon's Eye Zoo and the LA, LA Lakers Zoo. So these are three amazing uh, zoos that are on one rock. And we have that mystery SPS coral that's growing on the one side of it as well, guys. And uh, hopefully maybe you guys can tell me what this coral is. Um, please leave your comments below and we'll see if we can figure out this uh, coral together, guys. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll bring you guys up close and personal. And then uh, Clattenburg, we'll end up putting it, uh, turning the LED lights down right now. We're gonna have to open up the reef link, guys. And we'll bring all those blues right down to low as we can get and see if we can get these zoo to, zoos to pop, guys. Um, one tip, make sure to be very careful while handling uh, these uh, Zorocs. They have that poison in them. That's uh, polytoxin. You don't wanna get it in your eyes, in any open wounds or anything like that. And keep it out of the reach of your children as well. I end up, when I was handling this coral, I held it by the rock. I never touched any zoos and I was being very careful. So be careful when you're trying this at home, guys, okay? Um, so what, what application I use to mount this, I end up using the, the Aquascape uh, putty. It's a two-part system. You have purple and a gray, and you bind them together, and they harden underwater. It's a great system that I really like. And uh, one of our club members, uh, he ended up winning uh, one of these as well. So this is what I use on my corals. Um, where I end up purchasing the, the zoo rocks from is from uh, Aqua Valley in Ottawa in the West End, and he has one in the East End as well, guys. So th this is his card. I will leave it. For you guys to see, it's aquavalley.ca. Uh, great guy, great information. He'll hook you up with some very beautiful and rare corals, guys.
Guys, so I got the Zorock right there, the three kinds with the SPS coral. So I got my reef link open. So let's start turning it down. Let's turn the blues and see what we got here, guys. So let's turn our reds right down. Let's turn our greens down. Let's turn our cool whites. So there you go. They're starting to pop there now. So let's move around here a little bit. There's more colors in the back, so it's hard to, hard to see. You guys see them back there? So they're looking really good. So let's turn the blues down a little bit more. See what we got. So we'll bring them up, see how close I can get in here for you guys. So see them? So there's a few more different kinds on the other side. The way I mounted it, it's harder to tell, but they'll spread and definitely get to see them a lot nicer. But definitely a nice looking zoos, guys. Oh, there's my NASO tank photobombing again. So you guys can see a bit of the blue in there. It's amazing. So let's go, let's uh, let's do a couple preset modes and see what we got here. Let's go polyfluorescent. So there you go, you guys can see all that are used in different, uh, different settings. You can get different colors usually out of it. There's co uh, coral radiance, so you guys can see. Blues. Amazing. All right, so let's turn this back up now. Let's bring everything back up. So there we go, guys. All right, guys, so that's Coral Friday uh, this week. I really hope uh, you like that coral. It's amazing looking coral, and I can't wait to frag it up. If you guys have any corals that you guys would like to see, please leave your comments below. I'll definitely check them out, and I'll always get back to my comments with you guys. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with with that mystery coral. Hopefully you guys can uh, figure it out, and I'll be doing some research to find it out as well. So please subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, please, if you guys want, you can join uh, my Facebook club, uh, Farm Boy Reef Club on uh, Facebook as well. It's a great place. We're almost 4,000 members and got a lot of great information on there, guys. So please join in. All right. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. You never know what coral's coming up next, guys. Have a good weekend.